Good morning. Good morning. Excited to be here. I'm excited to pray with you guys and fellowship with you and encourage you. Oh, Jesus, we invite you. Lord, we thank you, God. We praise you. We invite you into our day. Lord, lead us, guide us. We, we just come into your presence, God. We praise you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Lord, we want to praise your name. We want to magnify your name. We want to focus on you and magnify all that you are. God, we want to see your glory. We want to see your power. We want to see you working through us in the earth. Lord, work in us, God. Fill us with your power your spirit lord allow us to come into your presence and and sit before you god and and just gaze on your beauty and gaze on your glory jesus lord we thank you that you wake us with song that you are singing over us that you rejoice over us that you are a good parent good morning guys i know many of you are parents that's because I must I am not refreshed. <laughs> Thank you that I look that way. My son is actually on his way here. He's taking a cab and I went to bed at midnight. I got some work done last night. My husband is gone, so I was able to uh work in the evening after the baby went to sleep. Mm. Jesus, we thank you, God. I love my daughter so much, and I know you love your children. I just could watch her sleep. I love to be there to nurse her, which is, if you notice, I drink a lot on these. It's because I am breastfeeding and I am very thirsty. I can't go an hour without drinking something. Now, granted, I'm drinking coffee, but Lord loves to give us what we need. He is a good parent. He is a good parent. He loves to provide for us. I mean, when my daughter cries out, my instinct reaction is to find out what it is that she needs you like my window yeah it's great you know this is back up behind my house and it's interesting there's a house facing this way but um <laughs> i'll be looking forward to meeting those neighbors we have a, a third of an acre which is really a blessing we can do stuff with that lord i thank you for your blessings i thank you for our homes lord help us to be grateful for our homes wherever we are whatever it looks like um you know just have a roof over our head oh man i remember being so grateful for my little apartment that i got in 2013 when i moved to charlotte um to help my son chase his dreams of being a professional ballet dancer I had bad credit and no money and no job, and I said, we gotta do this. This is, this is an opportunity. He got offered a apprenticeship. So I went down on the weekend, believed the Lord. I knew I couldn't get a regular apartment because I didn't have a job and I didn't have credit. Got on Craigslist, found a, a I said, I know it needs to be right here because we have one car. <laughs> and, and so it needs to be within a mile where he could ride his bike to the ballet company. And uh, for $450, I got this one bedroom duplex that the dirt room or like what was probably the laundry room became my son's bedroom. It was like a matchbox. It, it fit his bed and a bookshelf and a dresser with like that much walking room. And you had to go through his room to go to the bathroom. And I painted all the walls and I got tile from the dollar store and because the living room floor was just not, it was non-existent. And I tiled the floors and I was so broke <laughs> that I just, I had a carpet. So I didn't tile the entire floor. I had the carpet there and I just tiled around the edges where it looked like there was a floor under it. And I really made that place really cute. There was a massive gas heater in the middle of the living room, which I finally talked our landlord out of getting out of there. And uh, just decorated it up really nice. And we had the best two years there. And uh, that's where I met my husband. I rented out that little matchbox to uh, earn some extra money. I started working two jobs after my son moved out. Actually, things got better really quick because my son started making money and paying half the bills. And then I got a job in my field. And, and then I worked six days a week to help him when he moved to New York. 
help him pay his exorbitant rent up there so that he could continue chasing his dreams. So, say all that to say, no matter where we are, we can praise the Lord. I have blog posts, I may have taken them down, where I would just lay on that couch on Sunday afternoon and see my son taking a nap and, and just, you know, see an uh, orange or something like that ripening or a pear ripening in the window and just practice the presence of God. You know, God is with us. He is all around us. He is filling us. And, and He is blessing us. And He is loving us. And no matter what our situation, we can experience that blessedness and that love. No matter what the situation there were some hard times. I went through some hard times in my life. Hard, hard times. And pressing in and fasting. Pressing in and prayer. God is always good. He's always good. He's always good. Yes, I made do with what I had at the time. And the house that we had before that was also a duplex that my grandmother owned in Chattanooga. We lived there 10 years. And God blessed us there. Um, somebody gave me. It was just by the Lord. I mean, I always tithed. I found couches on the side of the road that were like brand new. They must have been in somebody's den. There was just a little bit of cat hair on one corner. Clean couches. Sectional sofas. God gave me off the side of the road. Uh, a, a man came into my store. I had a, a business. And uh, we got to talk and I ministered to him. And he was a carpenter or something and he put he just said I can put hardwood floors in your house and he came with his crew one day and put hardwood floors throughout my little duplex and um, put real tile in my bathroom and I had painted the cupboards and painted the walls and I had a piano in there and forest friends would come in and say wow when you come in this house it looks like a big house inside you know like something you would see so I, you know, I mentioned this, and I think one of the prophetic words for June is, is work. You know, do that. That is true. Somebody said you did the best you could with what you had. That's what we should always do, whether it's in our home, with our children. You might be a single parent. You think, I can't parent. Uh, my children aren't going to have the same opportunities that, you know, somebody who's married has. You can't think like that. You go, God is makes himself strong in our weakness. He will meet us in our weakness. He will meet us in our lack and fill us up and fill it up. You know, if you are a single parent, <laughs> come here, my son's home, you guys. So he's gonna have to sit here with me for a minute. I'm talking about him. He just looked in the window. Hey, honey, you wanna come in here with me? I'm just talking about how we may do with a little apartment. This might be a little bit different this morning. Come get a chair. <laughs> how was your flight? Oh, Lord. Thank you, God, for my son. Oh, I'm going to try not to cry. <laughs> oh. This is the longest we've went without seeing each other. <laughs> you want to sit down or you feel like not sitting down? <laughs> This is my son. I was just telling him about our rinky dick apartment, how I made to do with it. Hey. hey. Oof, long flight. <laughs> like a whole day, almost. It's like 24 hours. Yeah. Did, Did you, you sleep? Did? Thank you. So much. Yeah, so much. I was out. <laughs> Well, good, because I'm going to drink lots of coffee. We're going to yeah. get stuff done today. Okay. What do you think of the house? It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Never thought. Yeah, what an upgrade, right? Uh -huh. Like our hole in the bathroom, floor, <laughs> like see-through. You have to look around. Oh, oh so exciting. Woo! So, welcome home. Ah, I was going to... I was going to talk about... What was I going to talk about? Hmm. I, want, I was going to see, I was thinking this morning, if I could interview you maybe tomorrow or this evening about dream fulfillment and what it really takes. Because my prophetic word for June was about work. Hmm. And this boy right here had a dream to be a professional ballet dancer. Really, it really took form at about 15. And 
when I say he worked, <laughs> I mean, when he was 17, uh, he was being homeschooled, and he would go to ride his bike to uh, Charlotte Ballet, where he was an apprentice, uh, work all day. I don't know how many hours you dance at what? Nine to six. Nine to yeah. six. He'd be training. Seven. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, seeing your son hug you gives me hope for your relationship with your son. Please, yes. We, he hated it me for change. a couple of years. It will change, yeah. <laughs> 100%. It was not always like that. <laughs> always a deep love, but not always... Yeah. Understanding. Yeah. Yeah. You said always, uh, not always eye to eye, but always heart yeah. to heart. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I was kind of hard on him. I was pretty strict. And um, he wasn't a very compliant <laughs> teenager. He wasn't horrible or anything. A will, a willpower. Yes. Yeah. Strong will. He was, strong if will. he didn't understand the role, he didn't think he ought to follow it. Yeah. I mean, this was somebody. <laughs> I may have told you who came to me as a teenager after having researched marijuana and said, you know, Mom, let's let's t discuss this. I you try know. to make decisions very logically, even if they're not always right. If it, it makes sense to me, then yeah. sometimes I can give myself permission to do yeah. things. Yeah, so he wasn't just out there trying to be the worst kid ever, but sometimes he would... I don't think I had as much fear of discipline. I think I made decisions based off the fact that I just wanted to do it regardless of the consequences. And but I, then you then you figured out why it was okay. Yeah. <laughs> Explained yeah. it to me. Yeah. <laughs> so I drug tested him a lot. Yeah. But anyway, we got through that. <clears throat> yeah, I think I've told you guys the story before about how he had a friend that he worked with. Oh, at first, I let me that, yeah. let, let me, <laughs> you did. Yeah. So, um, you know, he was going uh, into work. I mean, he was, he'd get off work. He would go to the gym. He had a second job at Starbucks. Was that the first year? Yeah, and I uh, switched between Starbucks and Amelie's. Uh-huh. Yeah. So he was working two jobs and working out at the gym with this dream and this vision. And he helped me with the bills once he was able to. And, um work it, you know the prophetic word for june if you haven't seen it already there's two parts of it <laughs> and it's really good because it's not about doing works it's more about if you want to see the dreams in your heart fulfill what it takes mm. what it takes um so jesus jesus was i gonna say something else just what it takes. Like, yeah. it's, it's hard. Like you have to, it's a lot of like, it's just like envisioning it for me. I think a lot of people like have the desire and the want to like do something. I mean, nobody like doesn't want to be great. It's just like making those like conscious decisions. And honestly, even now that I'm joining the company too, it's the consistency in it that makes it so much more important. You know, people have to like, they have to keep going at it for a while to get those like long lasted type results. If you kind of like hit it really hard for these short spurts and then drop off it doesn't like oh i didn't get i didn't yeah, get the it thing it doesn't doesn't work as, as well <laughs> so he decided at 18 after he was in the second company with the charlotte ballet he was actually a company member he started late with dancing he said i really want to um go back and train for a few more years something bigger I he wanted something, something bigger more, little I, I didn't want to s start the Beginning I, my career, not where I was, it was bad, but I just wanted to push myself farther to do something more. Yeah. You know? And he knew with more training, he would get a be into a better company. Better chance, yeah. And some people don't want to go through that. You know, you have a big dream, you have a big vision, and it takes time, or you have to put in more effort. And, you know, people just want it now. And even in the prophetic, there's so much talk about these suddenlies and the immediatelys. And God does drop things. But typically those things drop after you've been working at whatever it is that you're supposed to work at. Like, out of nowhere, he finally gets this contract from Hong Kong. And it's also not in always the time frame that we thought ourselves in. Because I thought to myself, like, I'm in a company now. If I go back to school for a year then I'll just be like bam like I'll just get that that job that I wanted and I went back for a year and it wasn't God's plan for me to just stay one year he wanted me to stay two and I ended up going to two different schools and doing auditions throughout that two-year process and ended up growing way more than I would have and being way more ready two years into New York than if I had gotten the job when I thought I kind of deserved slash needed it 
um, after that one that one year mark. Yeah, and it was a disappointment to not yeah. get. He didn't. You didn't even get a job offer, did you? Not one that would have supported me. Mm -hmm. No. And and the last year he trained there was at Alvin Ailey. And so it rounded out his dance. All these different new skill sets and different new challenges. I mean, it was basically like I said, you know, what, what situation can I put myself where I feel the most uncomfortable and the most weak at? What, what part of my, like, aspect of myself as a dancer do I, do I struggle at the most? And so I went to a place that was dancing all these other different styles and things that weren't even in the direct line of what I thought my goal was that they would actually help me to do. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted to be in a ballet company and I was doing all these other commercial styles and not really understanding why, but that was where I felt like I was meant to be. So I worked hard in things that at the time didn't have as much interest in and then the interest kind of developed mm -hmm. like more with it, you know, as I went along. And I think anything, whether it's a ministry or a job or a marriage, what you put into it is really what you get out. <laughs> And so much we read in the scriptures about sowing and reaping, and then we lament when our lives aren't turning out the way that we hope because we lack the um, belief that the word of God is true. Because if we really believe the word, we are going to work. If you really believe, you know, and it's it's risky. <laughs> it's really risky because he just put these years in and he did what he could, but God himself had to give him favor. I mean, the Hong Kong Ballet is a really uh, sought-after company. Distinguished. It's distinguished, yeah. and they pay well yeah. for ballet companies. And what you're saying about that belief, you know, mm -hmm. like having having a faith about something that you want that's very clear, mm -hmm. you know? I feel like when obstacles come and what you have, you really have, like, you know, a, a clear heart and a clear mind about something that you're chasing after. When obstacles come, they're not as, like... It's not so harsh, you know. I feel big like, picture. Yeah, you're looking, you know, you're looking more at a broader perspective of it. Like, so I pray if you have dreams and visions, we do get impatience, and sometimes we we just have fear that mm -hmm. it's not going to work out for us. That it's not going to work out for us. But what do you have to lose? <laughs> you know, you have to lay down your life for the cause of the cross. And listen, God is strategically placing people in every arena. You know, somebody could say ballet or him being a dancer has nothing to do with the kingdom, but it has everything to do with the kingdom. Because how many believers are in the Hong Kong ballet that you know of? Zero. You. That's it. <laughs> and how many people I even realize, I mean, I think being born in the Southeast United States, I, if you are even in America, you don't realize like how much of a christian based community we have there's churches everywhere at least people like a lot of people say they go to church on sundays and have like some knowledge of jesus and the christian faith i mean you go internationally and people just it's a lot of it's never even been you know the the religions that they grew up around and the culture that they grew up around i mean jesus was nowhere so i mean you go to china and no i mean people don't know about jesus so whatever the first the, world country. <laughs> <laughs> Back to sewing machines messaging from May. Yes. Mm. You know, the thing is, whatever's in your heart, it is gonna help if you lay it down and say, God, redeem this. This is for you. It's it's not just I want this for myself. And this is gonna help increase your faith to move for it. When you really believe that God wants the things for you that you want, that you have in your heart, not the not the soulish things. But your deepest desires, your heart's desire, the, the gifts and the talents, the passions that are within you, stir those things up and know that God wants to see those things fulfilled. And I, what, what did I title this? My, my thought was, the world is a mess. I just, I just um, posted something on my personal wall about a psychiatrist talking about how it's child abuse to do these sex changes on children. You can, 16 years old, you can have a double mastectomy after having been on male hormones for a year. You know, it is out of control, the deception that is in this world. And we are to be the example. We are to be the light. We are to be the salt. And God is, um, and part of that is being an excellent specimen. Jesus was the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. So God wants to heal us. He wants to, he wants to 
have us walking in abundant life. I really believe that. And I'm not just talking about money, I, although I do believe God wants to provide for our needs above and beyond anything we could ever hope, ask, or imagine as we grow to be able to um, be good stewards of that and as we've sown into it. But I just see the standard that God is raising up. And that's why I feel compelled to talk about some hard things sometime because I believe that the body of Christ, that true believers, each and every one of you guys want that for yourself. You want to be like Christ. You want to have power. You want to have abundant life. You want to be in your place. Ooh, this is interesting. This is like the only thing on my table right now, salt. <laughs> We're called to be salt and preserve the earth. Um, Oh, Jesus. If the salt loses its saltiness, it's not good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled by the pigs, is what the scripture says. I think it's pigs. <laughs> but Lord, help us to be what you've created us to be. Help us to shine. Help us to prosper in the things that you've called us to. Help us to be patient. Help us to work hard, Lord. Help us to work hard. Heal our bodies. Heal our mind. Heal our faith. Remove the doubt and unbelief, God. If there are some of you that don't have anything in your heart that you're believing for, you don't have anything that you're, um, you know, pressing in for, you know, what is that scripture? The kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. Fervency, fervency, just a passionate desire to move into everything God has for you, to move into God's heart, to live from that place that, that place in the heart of God where the Holy Spirit is moving through you so the things that you think and the things that you speak and the things that you do are lining up and your character um, is strong and you are dependable and you are a pillar and the people that come around you recognize there's something different and it is going to draw people to Christ I don't care what arena you're in. If you're in your home, in your neighborhoods, in your church even, because there's a lot of people in church that aren't believers. <laughs> if the Lord still got you in that type of church inside the four walls, you are there to be a light. You are there to be an example. And so the enemy is after that. And he's wanting to pollute and distort and deceive and he starts with deceiving us about ourself deceiving us about him and so Lord we ask that you would untangle any deception we have about ourselves, any false identities anything that we identify ourselves with that is not the Lord Jesus Christ help us to find our identity in you and you alone Lord grow us up and help us to be mature believers help us to be Literally, each and every one of you, each and every person should be able to have a neighbor or a friend or be to the place where if God had you around some specific person and directed you to cast a demon off of him, you wouldn't freak out about it. <laughs> you know, nursing. Oh my goodness. That is a wonderful, blessed job. You know, we're supposed to go about uh, doing good, casting out demons, healing the sick, you know, even raising the dead. I haven't, I haven't done that as far as I know. I have been, you know, that's just the physical body and the spiritual body. And it's actually really harder <laughs> to raise a spirit probably than a body. It's a miraculous thing. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord. God, I pray that you would help us. That you would help us to work hard. That Listen, there are too many um, mealy mouth, weak you know, people who are, are languishing in their weaknesses and they're not moving forward because I can't do this because of this or I can't do this because of this. If, if you are hearing this saying, well, that doesn't work for me because of this, whatever the excuse is to say, you can't live in the fullness of all that God has for you. Um, you know, that's going to cause, that's going to stop. <laughs> that's going to cause you to stop. I mean, he works through injuries. His back's injured right now. We're going to pray for healing. God, heal his back. We prayed for you the other day. But, I mean, I've seen him go to work on some major injuries. I mean, he keeps going. He keeps going. He keeps going. 
you know, he'll go in and get the massage or we've, I can't tell you how many times we went to the chiropractor, physical therapist, physical therapist massage therapist, and God does supernaturally heal. He does supernaturally he heal immediately. He yeah. Does, yeah. I, I think I've told you the story. He had a slit disc and he had a scholarship for the Houston Ballet and it was like two weeks away. He didn't have time for therapy. I remember that. <laughs> so we prayed, and I fasted, and we pressed in. It just got really better. It, it, was... it got better. We went in and had an MRI. They're like, there's no issue. Because I'm like... I remember that. That's funny. Yeah. And he went on and, and did, did his thing. I did it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so sometimes there is miraculous healing, and we pray for that. We pray, God, that you would increase our faith for the miraculous healing of our own lives, of our own relationships. Jesus, we want to be the example. We don't want to be politically correct. I'm not a real political, prophetic person. But, I mean, there are things that need to be discussed because if Christians aren't discussing them, it just seeps into the church and, and nobody wants to say anything. You guys, it's out of hand. People are mutilating their bodies and allowing their children to mutilate their bodies. People are saying it is okay if you think you're a man, everybody else has to, you know, this is a small majority of people, but they're so loud and they're so forceful and fervent in what they're saying that other people are scared to come against them. And we got to be fervent in the truth. We got to be like, I don't care. You know, it's the emperor's new clothes. And it's interesting. We did a play when I was in college. He was just little. And I've said Same. this was prophetic. You know, uh, this was a prophetic, um, and it's still in the making. I see now. Uh, it was college age people, and I said, I have this son. Who, why doesn't he play the little boy in the crowd? Do you guys know the story of the emperor's new clothes? <laughs> okay. What it is, is there's an emperor. He's full of pride, and, you know, he wants all his flowery clothes and to parade around and everybody to tell him how great he is and blah, blah, blah. And so he gets these two tricksters to come. These are the demons, you know. And they weave him. They, they're getting all this money. Give us more gold. We're going to weave you all these clothes. And there's nothing there. There's no clothes. But it's group think. It's what happens, you know. And this is what happened probably in the Nazi concentration camps where nobody wants to go against the evil. Nobody wants to say anything because everybody else is acting like it's okay. And so they weave these... Uh, non-existent clothes and they show them to people and oh isn't this great isn't this wonderful and all the king's courts are like oh yeah and so the king doesn't want to act like he can't see it because they said only smart people can see it only wise people can see this cloth if you're dumb you can't see it and so nobody wants to be dumb nobody wants to be the fool you know and so they all say they can see it and the king says he can see it and, he, and they put these clothes on him and he's going through town naked and everybody's cheering. Yay, beautiful clothes. You know, beautiful clothes. Well, Forrest played the part of the little boy in the crowd who was like, he's not wearing any clothes. <laughs> and, and everybody, there's like a rumble throughout the crowd. And he's just determined. The little boy's like, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have eyes. Yeah, I have eyes. I can see. There's, there's no clothes. I have eyes. You are a female. You have breast and a vagina. Or you are a man. You have... Male parts. Can't be a different age. You yeah. Can't be a different yeah, age. You can't just be 60. Like, yeah, like. that's the truth. And so I felt like that was prophetic. So then as he does that, the crowd rumbles. I played the, I played the emperor's wife in this play. The crowd rumbles and, and everybody is like, no, they're not there. And so then the emperor's embarrassed. But then in this play, he bows to Forrest and thanks him for showing him his foolishness, you know. And he picks Forrest up on his shoulders and he is parading him around the theater <laughs> actually off going, stage <laughs> yeah hey oh, you know like he, the kid's name yeah, yeah whatever the kid's name was and ever and that was how the play ended and i didn't know it at the time but i believe that it was prophetic for the call on his life because he is around a group of people and he has so he has a, a special anointing to Stand for truth, but not be judgmental or critical. He's around a lot of people who are sexually confused, and you know, in the ballet world, 
in the he, world. Yeah, in the world. And in a culture where women are so not viewed still as being equal. I mean, it's even, I feel like, like the view on sex and things even in America is bad. But you go over to China and it's definitely like it. They're very, very put down. Mm -hmm. Chauvinistic. Like, yeah, so much. Not viewed as being strong. Yeah. And... So, I think that the anointing on his life, and I pray over each and every one of your children that God shows you their natural bent, the, the, the signs and the prophetic things that he will do, that he will reveal and show you what his heart is so that you can put your faith out there to believe for that. Mm -hmm. That in a world that he has been submerged in, I mean, one of his closest friends was a, a gay guy at Charlotte Ballet. I've had a lot of close yeah, friends that work Yeah, a lot of, a lot. More and than the normal straight yeah. like, guy, I feel like. <laughs> yeah, and they're drawn to Forrest because of his masculinity. <laughs> and the fact, I really feel that. I, yeah. And, 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 I, and I think because, you know, a lot of times there's been some confusion about what it is to be a man. And, you know, there's all different reasons that somebody ends up being gay, but... And, and there are, I won't get into all that, but, you know, many times it has been a, a inner vow against, I don't want to be like that so, because they've had a bad example of what it is to a be a man. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I believe that I, I know many times when it's come up, you've told me about how you'll just, nobody will even know your opinions about that. And then, it'll, and then they come out really, really strong, and people are kind of shook by it. They're like, "What? You, you're, you your your really, friends get? What you, do you, you really don't agree with it? You think it's a sin, and that that's something that they really shouldn't do, and it's bad." And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I'm, but you're friends with us. You I like love, us. I love the people for who they are. I mean, yeah. it was it was like you used to tell me I get in trouble. Like I love you. I'm, I don't love what you do though, and that's why you're getting you know in trouble mm -hmm. for this. It was like I do love them as friends, but no, I don't agree with their decisions. I don't agree with their lifestyle and. I think it's wrong, like mm -hmm. pretty blatantly, you mm -hmm. know, and I think it takes people back sometimes so much because they would never see that in my interactions or day-to-day -day encounters with. They have this idea that if you think they're wrong, that means you hate them, you're judging them, you're criticizing who them. who they are yeah, as a person. as a person. I, yeah. I mean, there are obviously homosexuals that, you know, have different personalities and I don't feel like have that type of heart or spirit that I would want to be friends with and yeah. they're just like there are straight people that you could you know it could go either way you yeah know, still read the people for who they are mm -hmm. and I do I do believe that we have to stay separated out but that we have to be in the world we have to have people around us that aren't saved at times and 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 I believe <laughs> I'm believing more and more I know he doesn't have a lot of uh there's not a lot of Christians over there, but I do think it's good to stay separated out within yourself. And I talk about that, you know, being careful of transference of spirits. Um, but God, use us. Bring us into the lives of people and help us to love them like you love them. But set a standard. to Have a standard. Good morning, Beth. Good morning, Eva. Um, the door closed in May. Pray for God's guidance. I will pray for you, Ava. You know, when one door closes, another door opens. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jean says, he's such a handsome young man, you can see your beautiful spirit. <laughs> yes. Oh, I love him. Lord, I pray that you would give us um, opportunities. You know, and don't think you got to be perfect before you can shine for Jesus. Because it's never going to happen. <laughs> That's a big thing for me sometimes. I feel like just recently did I really start getting the confidence to speak so openly about my faith to people that I may have known for a while and didn't know that I had such strong beliefs and opinions about it. And I think the move to Hong Kong gave me so much freedom because it gave me this sense of like, I don't really care what anyone thinks. I'm a foreigner here anyway, and I'll just go ahead and be fully different because I am fully different. I'll never be like you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and you had two years out on your own, yeah. I think, where you were kind of finding your own footing in your faith mm -hmm. and, you know, recognizing, you know, just being around more worldly people because he's really sheltered. Mm -hmm. I mean, we always had people in our house. We were always ministering to people. I would, you know, cast... Sheltered in a way. I mean... Sheltered but, in a way. You know, more morally, what I... You filtered my input through media and, you know, what I watched and saw, but I... I feel like I saw a very real perceptive of the world. You you had a lot of people that you took in to bless and give light to that were pretty bottom scrapers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> 
<laughs> I remember, you know, in Highland Park, they were, they were you know, I yeah. mean, like... Yeah, I realized it probably wasn't a good idea. Prostitutes and drug dealers, and I mean, they had sweet spirits, and you you knew, and you were helping them, but I was around. Yeah. Like, I, I mean... Yes. So... And but it taught me so much. I, I feel like at an early age, watching you have just a loving heart for people of all walks and appearances and looks raised me to just not have eyes of this world with people and who they are. Yes. You just don't no know. respect or person. Yeah, just you don't know what people have been through. You cannot judge someone off their outwards appearance. You just can't. Or even the current actions that they're making. You just don't know what's going on with them. Mm -hmm. I feel like I saw that so much as a kid. Like It, it really stuck with me mm -hmm. just to have love for everyone. Just don't know. Yeah, I think you even took it to a whole new level. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> Way to go, Forrest. Oh Lord, we want to we want to remember your word for this month to lose sight of ourselves and all our own interests. Our all our own interest in people. When we're all about our own interests, we're gonna interact with people and wonder if they like us. And if we're worried about whether somebody likes us, we're not gonna be able to love them well. Mm -hmm. If we're worried about whether they're accepting us, we're not gonna be able to love them well. You know, go into a place and realize you are the one who is to change the atmosphere. You are the, really as a believer, you are the present and the prize. And not in a prideful way, but you're bringing something to the table. Confidently. Yeah, bring it confidently. Confident. Kings and queens. This year is kingdom people, kingdom purposes. Kings and queens. Princes. Princes and princesses, we go forth into the world knowing that we are carriers of the grace of God. We are ambassadors of heaven. We are ambassadors of heaven. We're going into the situations that God calls us to. Oh, Lord, help us to understand this. Help us. Free us from all the shackles of insecurity. Free us from all the shackles of, of rejection. I'm feeling less than. I mean, apart from God, we're nothing, but we're not apart from God, people. We are not apart from God. He is with us. He is in us. And He is empowering us to do whatever it is that He's called us to do for His purposes. So we don't have to stress. If it's something He has for us, He will release it. If we are going to use it for His glory, and you, and you really don't have to be perfect, God's grace is so available and he works with us where we are you know he works with us where we are um we we come before him on the basis of the cross we come before him not in our own merits you know if you listen to that june word and you had any kind of condemnation hit you that wasn't from god that wasn't from god your daughter's 34 and she's still scared of her mom <laughs> Oh Lord, yeah, he didn't he didn't respond well to spankings. I I probably spanked him too much. I didn't know so what much <laughs> when he was little. All the time, all the time. He would go, mm, "Not gonna cry." He's a tough kid though. Yeah. I, mean, I wasn't I wasn't too spiritually broken by it. <laughs> no, I probably wasn't the best method for you, but I was. I didn't know. I tried everything. The I charts, was a tough one. The charts and the. Not easy. And, the, and and discipline and prizes and... Oh. No, you you fought for my, like, well-being. Like, <laughs> I really <laughs> did. 100%. I, I didn't give you the easiest time. No. And and really, though, I feel like we were... I was, I was fighting Changing out from... Yeah, I was so fighting much. out from curses. The you woman know? you are now is just not the same person than when I was growing up as a kid. Like, no, especially that and, first five years after I got saved. He was four... Yeah when I really turned my life over to God. So he had to walk through um, some times where I yelled at him. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't the worst. Yeah. Kids go but, through, like... Yeah, but I did scream at you more than once. <laughs> I screamed back. <laughs> <laughs> and um, But God did grow and change me, and I was so thankful that I did change and that he was able to see me change. And I don't care if your kids are six or 16 or 30 you know if you've made mistakes you know they can see <laughs> she just thought I would well you you probably had a, a daughter 
<laughs> that you could look at a certain way. I could spank him, and he all would... dads still do the same thing that night. Yeah, <laughs> and, and he would say it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. He would refuse mentally to... block any physical pain. I'm just like <laughs> I tough this out. I uh, used my. And you're like no, it will. I'm not going to allow give you, you the satisfaction of watching me cry. <laughs> you break every spoon in the house. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they can't arrest me now. <laughs> oh, God. I, I don't think that it'll be like that with Abigail Rose. <clears throat> no. You paid your dues. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus, help us. Lord, thank you. God, I praise you. I pray for unity and family relations. Lord, I, I, what I was saying is no matter what you've been through, your kids watching you change. Oh, huge, huge, huge. It will impact them. Whole life. Yeah, it will impact them because it doesn't matter what you've done. And I remember when I said to him at about 12, he, I really felt guilty about the mistakes I had made. And by then, I had been walking with the Lord long enough where I had made a lot of changes. But he had some damage, and he was putting it back on me. I was reaping what I sowed in that relationship. And, and I said, you know, God said, stop. Stop overly apologizing. You've already apologized. You know, he's like 12 now. you got to let him know. You Yes, you made mistakes, but you are forgiven, and you're not going to let, you, you know, manipulate guilt me. guilt trip me. I, I, yeah. was very de I feel like I was a bit deceptive, too, about Ooh. guilt, trip, guilt like, tripping you, you on past, me. Yeah, past decisions you had made. I realized, you, you know. scarred me. Yeah, she messed up. I'll bring it back up all the time now. <laughs> <laughs> and so finally I just said, look. I've done, you know, I've changed, I'm changing, you know, you are of an age where the decisions that you make your are own. your own. Yeah. And really what I think happened in a way is I kept trying to love on him and then he came to the realization that he wasn't being cool to me. And he was like, oh, yeah. uh oh. Yeah, it switched a little bit. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then... And My then time it, for revenge. <laughs> <laughs> And so they got, you know, he he's healed and, and he's healing. And I do think him watching me change helped him, I hope. So much throughout my whole life. I mean, I don't know how much you know about her testimony and her younger self. But, I mean, the the knowledge of I, I that I have about the decisions and things that she did and made throughout her younger years and the, the cleansing of herself to a new, you know, and this new woman and who she is now and, you know, so much wisdom and love and just purity about yourself you know I mean having that first-hand knowledge I have been able to kind of take it with me wherever I go with any individual with just the realization that people can change and people don't always know the decisions that they're going to make and the mistakes that they're going to make and yes sometimes they are so big and detrimental and they'll you know they affect the rest of your life but I, you know Anyone can do anything, but at that same time, like, people can still change for, you know, the, the yeah. greater good. I mean, so. realize that your mother was a prostitute. <laughs> you know, I don't, and so I feel like it gave me eyes not to hate or judge anyone. You know, I have so many people that I'm around that just, they see or, you know, have this idea about people that they meet, whatever, it, you know, it, it's like maybe they, a, they a bad hold. walk of life. Yeah. yeah, you know, this person is that. And I'm like, you don't know anything about that person. You know what they were given at the start of their life comparatively to yours. You don't know the things that they've been through or had to dealt with. So mm -hmm. just really non-judgmental. You have no right. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you have no right to. That's good. Yeah, we need to remember that. I mean, I always say, you know, if you really are, have a real critical, judgmental attitude, the chances are you haven't actually dealt with your own depravity. Because anybody under the right circumstances, under a certain set of circumstances, could do anything. We all have a sin nature that is super, super fallen. Ever think you're above anything. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it's dangerous. Yeah. Because, you know, I mean, I, I counseled somebody who, you know, had a... A, a, a pastor for her father and um, you know she had saved herself for marriage but as the years went on you know it wasn't happening and she had a real you know I, I think she may have had some struggles thinking she was above all these women who had fallen you know prior to marriage and then it happened to her and you be careful because you set yourself up anything that you think you're not capable of doing mm -hmm. <laughs> you know it, uh, and, and the Bible does say don't judge people for the things that you judge them for you do yourself. Now, that's not saying you don't recognize and see when somebody's in sin. That's not saying you never correct anybody or 
um, make a judgment against another believer saying that is not okay. You know, man's leaving his wife in church. Nobody says anything because they don't want to judge it. No, you go and say, this isn't good. <laughs> and this is not okay. You know, if you leave your family, there's going to be consequences mm. and there's going to be things that happen to your family. That's not judgment that in that type of way. So it doesn't need to be taken out of context because if you rightly divide the word of truth, the Bible also says, Paul is talking and he says, do I not judge those within the church? It's not for us to judge those without of the church. So the sinners, of course they're sinners. Like, of course, of course they're going to lie and cheat and steal and do immoral things. They don't know the Lord. So that just goes without saying. Given. Yeah. I mean, people within the church, within your circle, within your influence, yes, you can make judgments about whether or not they're walking the way that they ought to and decide whether or not you want to associate with them. You're not supposed to associate with someone who calls themselves a believer that's living in sexual morality unrepentedly or really just blatantly living in sin who won't be corrected, who, you know, that's another story. I don't know what time it is. My phone's dead. Hmm. <laughs> oh, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. We praise you. We praise you for redemption. We praise you for uh, resurrection and unity and families and relationship. We thank you, God, that things do shift, that things do change, that you do heal, that you do strengthen, that you are a God that raises the dead, that you are a God that raises the dead. Lord, help us to set and be, you set the standard. Help us to rise up to the standard that you set in our own lives, Lord. Jesus, help us. Is there anybody who needs prayer for anything in sp specifically? I know we need prayer for Forrest back. He's going to get healed while he's here. There's the baby. The baby's asleep in bed. The baby. We gotta go see the baby. She'll be up soon. Did you get something to eat at the airport? Yeah, a little bit. I'm still hungry though. <laughs> Depression. Lord, we pray, uh, uh, you know, sometimes, and this, this message is good, uh, Marsha, because I think sometimes we're depressed because we have given up on our dreams and we have given up on hope and the God of all hope wants to come in and give you a new dream, wants to infuse it's hard if you are living enthusiastically it's 719 thank you Jean <laughs> it uh, she is a friend and partner of Emily Rose Lewis Ministries and been a huge blessing a divine appointment we've talked <laughs> um, so I'm so grateful for you I think about you and pray for you specifically throughout the day uh, Jesus um, You're talking it's, about it's, depression. Yes, depression. <laughs> and so when you get excited about something, I pray that God gives you a dream. Was it Marsha? Yes, I pray for you too, Mary. I love you. I love you. I love you. I pray God would just heal you, that you would see yourself the way that he sees you. And that in seeing yourself the way he sees you, everything that doesn't line up with that will just break off your life. In Jesus' name, I pray for you to have healthy, strong boundaries, to know yourself, and I believe you do, to continue fighting against any voice that would try to tell you you are less than, that you are, uh, you know, crazy, you've been through so much, and you have strength in the Lord, you have gifts, you have a song. I pray that you praise the Lord, Mary, that you sing, that you begin to sing again. I believe that's a gift that the Lord has given you and put in you, and your voice has been silenced in some way. And I pray that you begin to sing. Begin to sing. Healing, healing, healing. I pray for traveling mercies for Patricia's daughter and her classmates and, and just protection. They're gone all week. Direction and business, going through a transition. Um, more patient in all situations. Um, I, I'll, I'll, something I want to mention. I'm getting the Fasting from Glory to Glory on paperback. Dave did the... Um, Illustration. Yeah. And um, I have sent these out in ebooks and two training videos for the Fasting from Glory to Glory uh, training. And then we have a closed Facebook group. And uh, thank you, Mary. God bless you. And um, so what I want to offer right now, because this might be about uh, three weeks or a month before they come in, because this is like the... Um, 
proof copy to make sure all the pages, actually the pages are numbered weird, so I have to redo that. Yeah, that's strange, so I have to fix this. But if you partner uh, with this ministry, if you've already been in the fasting training, I, I'm going to send you this book if you request it. And if you haven't partnered yet, please partner because uh, right now those that are partnered, I'm going to send the fasting training to. And then when the book comes in, I'll also send it uh, the paper copy book. I'm doing the ebook now. Um, and if you just want to sign up for the training, it's a donation of any amount. Just give your best donation. Give your best donation and I will send it to you and a friend if you do it today and you mention this. Uh, I pray for healing in physical bodies, relationship with your daughter, Mary, for knee pain. I pray for healing for the pain in your knee in the name of Jesus. The pain has to go. Healing to ligaments, tendons, muscles. In Jesus' name, an acceleration of healing. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Uh, God is doing a new thing. Please pray for God's strategy. Yes, I pray for the strategies, the downloads, the blueprints. In the name of Jesus. You guys have to uh, e email me if if you are a partner. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll have these books for sale too on Amazon. They'll be $8.95. Um, and... Uh, but if you're a partner, I'll send you a book if you request one. And to, to partner, you go to my PayPal. It's in the top of the thing. And you just sign up for partnership by using PayPal. And you have it set on a monthly amount. Whether it's 25 or 50 or 100 or you can even do more. It's coming out monthly. And this will help me to be able to budget for the ministry. And also, I just now opened. I sent out emails to people who are already partnered yesterday. Or I began to, and I don't I don't have a ton of partners at this this point. But we have a, a closed group, and I'm going to do videos. I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to have prophetic words. I might do some personal prophetic ministry to people that are in the partnership group. So um, if you want to partner, send me an email and um, sign up on PayPal for that. And I really really appreciate your partnerships so we can go forward and do everything God's calling us to do. And I'm going to mention again. I'm putting on a conference. I'm picking the date this week. And it is Kingdom People, Kingdom Purposes, a royal marriage. And it's not just, it's not a marriage conference. Whether or not you are married, I really want you to come. It's going to be here in Herndon, Virginia. And I'm going to, I'm getting ordained as a minister and I'm going to officiate weddings. It's really? pretty cool. Yes. And it's going to be for people who are already married, you know, if you, you're not already married and you want to be married, we'll have to talk about that. <laughs> um, it confused you. Well, email me and we'll talk that through. It's a pretty simple process, but I can, I can help. I also have, uh, if you have a cash app, um, you can send me Desert Rose and Bloom. And uh, you can use that and do it that way. But so I'm just putting this out there. So if you are married and you're believing the prophetic word for this year that God's taken your natural marriage and transforming it into a kingdom mind of marriages. <laughs> yeah, it's called Glory Tribe on Facebook. Um, that's for the, the partners, friends and partners of Emily Rose Lewis Ministries. So be praying into that if you're married and you want to exchange vows with your spouse because I'm going to put on a little ceremony and... And also, if you want to come to mine and Dave's ceremony, because we've never had one, so that we're going to put on a ceremony. We got married at the courthouse. Forrest was there. And my friend Greg. <laughs> and his friend Greg, who barely made it, we were like, we need another witness, you know. So he's like, I'm like, do you have anybody that can come? And we got married at the courthouse. And so we're going to exchange vows. And I had said at the end of July, but that's just not going to be enough time to get people on board and to plan it. So if you are interested, begin to pray, Lord, is this for me? Also hope to do baptisms. So whether or not you're renewing vows in marriage or you're renewing your vows with the Lord, and, and, I'll, and I'll tell you when I get this together what the itinerary is as far as the teaching that's going to be going on. So God bless you. Share this. I appreciate you sharing this. And we'll see you in the morning. Bye.